Well, good morning, Dave from Out There Bushcraft. It's another beautiful day in the woods. It's actually a beautiful frosty day in the woods. We had something like 16, 17 degrees yesterday. Um, it's freezing, literally, today. Uh, so, you know, there's an old saying in the north of England, maybe the rest of England, I don't know, but really old saying that says, don't cast a clout before mares out, something like that. Um, and I guess the message is, you know, don't uh, put all your warm, uh, cold weather clothing, I guess. Don't put all your cold weather clothing away um, too early in the year because you can get a blast like this. Um, and that's certainly the case today. I've had to wrap up quite warm, but it is absolutely beautiful. Blue skies now. The snow and the frost is melting. Um, and I've come in just to check the woods out. We've got some groups coming in this week, so I thought I'd just check it out. Um, but while I'm here, I've noticed a few more plants coming through um, that are useful to us as bushcrafters and foragers and so on. You can see this little beauty here, which is um, primrose that's just starting to come through. So I thought we'd spend a little bit of time just talking about um, some of the plants that are available to us at this point in spring. Okay, so this little flower, as I said, is a primrose. Um, we get these kind of fairly soft um, textured leaves, uh, quite sort of dull. We get this beautiful little yellow flower. Um, see there's a lot of frost on it at the moment, um, but hopefully it will survive the frost that we've got this morning. Um, primrose, the first rose, as the name would suggest, of the year. Um, we can certainly use the uh, the flowers, pop them on a salad, they get used in conserves, jams and so on, um, and the, the leaves are edible as well. So that's quite a nice little plant that we can use. I'm not going to pick it today because it's also very useful as an early um, forage, I guess, for, for bees, you know, it's a, an early source of uh, nutrients for them too. So it, this is the only one I've got grown here, so I'm not going to pick it. Um, but certainly a useful little plant and nice to see um, early in the springtime. Okay. Okay, uh, what else can I tell you about this plant? Well, um, you know, so the, the flowers, um, they get used in confections and they're nice to add to um, a salad, whether it's a, a fruit salad or whatever. Um, the leaves are really high in vitamin C and they can be added to soups and stuff. Some people say they taste quite um, strong uh, peppery. Um, so that's something to take into consideration. But yeah, they can be added into soups and so on. Um, and uh, medicinally they're quite useful. So there's saponins and various other chemicals contained within them. and. Uh, years ago they used to be used in salves, they were um, boiled in with a lard, melted into a lard and used for skin conditions and burns and bites and so on. Um, and I believe they're still used at times for um, things like eye washes and, and stuff like that. Okay, so quite a useful little plant medicinally as well as, uh, um, as a food. Okay, so this little dinky little plant here is golden saxifrage or saxifrage depending on how posh you are I'm not um, this is a plant that um, is pretty easy to spot um, notice the little golden sort of yellow flowers and the tiny little leaves um, it grows into a kind of stubble you see it on little, in damp places little verges and, and often in little sheltered spots in the woods um, dappled sunlight and so on um, it flowers from about March through to April um, so we can identify the golden yellow flowers and there's no kind of petals on those flowers um, it often grows along the ground putting roots down it can cover huge areas and get really dense mat of this stuff um, and this is uh, the tiny little leaves but they're quite succulent and you can collect quite a lot of them and, and just add them to a wild salad and they're quite nutritious too so that's golden saxifrage okay OK, 
Okay, so here's a plant just here that most of us will recognise. This is the uh, common nettle, the stinging nettle, Urtica dioca. Um, we'll all know this one, I would imagine. Um, we've probably had the experience of being stung by this nettle. It has tiny little hypodermic um, hairs that um, will inject this kind of histamine um, chemical into your skin and cause the little welts that we all know and don't particularly love although I know there are people who quite like to eat these raw um, that's entirely up to you certainly not my cup of tea um, and actually cups of tea are probably more of a useful way of, of um, using the the plant so you can um, use it in a, a early sort of spring tea in fact all the way through the year because we harvest the top leaves we just kind of grasp them firmly we usually don't get stung we can harvest the top leaves and they are fantastic and nutritious packed with vitamin c packed with protein um so we can use them in quite a tasty tea and that's useful because a lot of the teas that we get when we're foraging are pretty bland this one is quite tasty um, we can wilt these over the fire to destroy the hairs and then it's good to eat um, as long as we apply uh, some degree of heat we can usually get rid of those hairs so we could boil it and um, you can blanch it and steam it and stuff and um, you can add it into soups it's great in uh, soup with wild garlic um, so there's a, a nice little plant that we can forage um, really uh, nutritious for us um, and easy to recognize of course okay that's the sting and nettle Hawthorns, again, a, a tree, a shrub that we'll uh, recognise. I think most people will be quite familiar with it. Um, the leaves are edible, so these leaves are tiny and not really well developed just yet, but there you can see the shape of the leaves, quite um, a, an easy way to identify them. So this is a, a shrubby little bush generally will grow as a tree if it's left to do that um, the leaves are edible and particularly nice at this time of year when um, when they're relatively small and fresh um, later on the year perhaps mm, a little bit better um, it's known as uh, bread and cheese this alongside the flowers so you get little flowers on this come out in about May time it's um, early April now. Uh, the flowers, when they're a little round bud, you can wrap them in these leaves and eat them together. Uh, that used to be known as bread and cheese, um, I guess because it was eaten as commonly as bread and cheese was. So the hawthorn is a, a really nice um, plant that we can take advantage of, um, chew on these leaves, watching out for the thorns of course, there are lots of thorns on this plant um, to protect it and of course um, those thorns can be used for fishing hooks and, and were used in the UK for fishing hooks um, until fairly recently actually for catching flatfish and so on in the estuaries. Um, I can just see the start of one of the flowers coming through there, a little bud. Um, by May time they will be in bloom and that's a tasty little uh, wayside snack. So that's the whole thought. Okay, I've spotted a, a cool little plant grown here. This is the pig nut okay so what we've got is how we're identifying this plant it's this one here 
is those kind of very fine feathery leaves okay now I can dig down to this uh, what we're actually after is the nut effectively the tuber that's in the ground um, you can see another one grown just there um, so what we do is we dig down and find the little nut now actually you can already see one of the issues with that uh, you can see that the the stem does this kind of strange little tapering bit so it gets really thin and it tapers off to one side um, so you dig up where you think the nut is and the nut is um, elsewhere um, so you have to be you know really careful as you're digging it up um, I'm actually not going to there's not many here so um, where there are only a few grown I, I would choose not to dig it up um, but I'll put a picture on of what a, a pig nut looks like um, and we can eat that raw um, people have different sort of thoughts about it some people think it tastes quite peppery some people think it's a bit like parsnip and um, I would suggest the best thing to do is try it out remember you would need permission to dig this plant up because we can take foliage fruit fungi and, and so on and so forth um, but we can't take um, the roots without permission and you can see that root is really tapering right down to nothing that would snap really easily if I give it a tug so I'm not going to do that uh, but there you go that's the pig nut so we recognize it by the um, feathery leaves we know that we have to have permission to dig it up because it's neither fruit nor foliage nor fungi nor flowers um, and as long as you do have permission it's worth looking at it's quite a, a nice little kind of um, wayside nibble I suppose um, again grows in woodland with a little bit of sunlight as you can see these plants are getting here okay there you go pig nut Okay, our next plant is grown in amongst all the nettles and whatnot here and that is cleavers that is uh, this plant here this is cleavers um, I'm going to that separated from the grass there we go this is cleavers we'll all recognize it as the plant that we always uh, throw on our mates back so when we're going to school back in the day um, it's a plant that is probably easily recognizable sometimes called goose grass uh, sticky willy um, it has tiny little hooks on it that allow it to stick to things <clears throat> the seeds that come out the fruit and bodies later on in the year also have uh, very similar hairs hooks um, and they help to attach to clothing but also fur and that's how the plant can be spread um, and it is quite a widespread plant you see some more grown here and here um, it tends to be in verges and on the banks of ditches and streams and so on um, again a useful plant for us um, we can make a tea with it um, we can uh, cook the leaves and eat them usually just the top couple of inches of the tips um, but again it's um, useful to steam them or add them to a soup which will just soften the little hooks makes them a little bit more palatable so there you go that's cleavers or goose grass okay well, I've found a little clump of violets grown here um, so that's another plant that we can use you can see the leaves are kind of like a um, a heart shaped thing uh, I'll get rid of that grass stem give me a second there you go so they're kind of like a heart heart shaped leaf so these violets are um, great in salads they're quite a mild leaf the flowers are, are also edible um, you'll notice for identifying them that the flowers are symmetrical in one plane only um, they're on a stem that has this little loop uh, this little kind of bend in it like that so they droop downwards um, so the leaves are edible the flower is edible the flower adds a nice bit of color to a salad obviously um, there are some plants that we have to be careful of that look a little bit similar um, but as long as we get it by the flower we know we've got the right plant so that's um, a nice little woodland plant called the violet tends to grow in um, quite sort of dense groupings and colonies um, the flowers come out probably as early as uh, February I would say 
Um, remember, it's about uh, it's early April now. Um, the flowers are fragrant, quite sweet. Some people think they're a little bit too pungent, um, and they just grow on in you know little edges and and uh, under hedgerows and places like that. So that is the um, the violet. Okay, and there are various different kinds. Here's another plant a bit further up the track um, that we will all recognise, uh, usually by the bright yellow flower. It's one of the D's that people recognise, uh, those being daffodils, daisies and dandelions. So this is a dandelion leaf. Um, dandelions are edible. Um, we can roast the roots to make a coffee. Uh, we can make teas with the leaves. Um, the name dandelion comes from Dont de Leon, teeth of the lion. And you can see it is quite a, a toothed leaf. Um, so that's a dead easy one for us to recognise. We've all seen where that grows in abundance. Um, so I won't go into too much detail, but that's yet another edible plant for us, the dandelion. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed uh, this little look into the um, things that we can forage at this point in the year. So this is um, in uh, April, as I said, in the north of England. The plants will um, flower at different times in different areas, of course. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed that. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Out There bushcraft and outdoor learning um, and as the year progresses we'll see what else is on offer for us when we get out there harvesting. Take care.